consult and then consume uh, overall. So that's one trend which is coming out and it has huge implications, right? To set up the teams, how to do business, conversions. Second, people who call us and consume products, the repeat is 60%. Or 60% log wapis aake le. Jo bina call karke hume bina baat kare direct humare website sun lete hain. Repeat is only 10%. Right, so that comes because setting up a call is a cost, right? But I think the ROI is tremendous, lifetime value in the cycle is tremendous to set that up. So that's been one trend we see. Three years pehle search hota tha ashwagandha ingredient. I'm just taking one example, and there are many. Shalaki we spoke in the morning. Increasingly, we see now ingredient searches going down. People are searching more for problems, stress. Directly, right? Uh, they are talking pain. They are talking fever. So it's a shift in consumer. What is happening? Three years pehle, wo log ingredient search kar rahe the, right? Now, as we go to the masses, I think they do not know ingredients. I think small group new ingredients, and hence that was happening, which also goes to what we are saying. Twenty percent is the share of Ayurveda today, right? So we are going to the masses now. We are massifying, right? So, sab logon ko ingredients nahi pata hai, but they understand it's efficacious. So, they are now searching the problems. So, it has an implication. The way I market, the way I communicate, what I write on the packs, it has an implication for every entrepreneur in this room, right? Do I continue to write Ashwagandha, or now I write stress? It solves this first, and then write Ashwagandha below, right? So, it is a call to take, right? There is nothing right or wrong, right? I'm just sharing some insights. What we are seeing today in the business. Third is, we see trust as a category. Right. Firstly, barrier is very less. Ki kuch kharaab hi. So potential to try is very high. What we are seeing. But the category has not built trust. Kahi na kahi wo trust thoda allopathy ki taraf jata hai. And that's why I think the call, how do we engage, how do we convince is important. And implication for us and what we are doing is setting up proactively clinical trials. I think a lot of us have research, but at the, I think as a body we have not shared. And I think massified to the efficacy of the products through clinical research, we have not you know brought it to the world. I would say right. Her company was up now and it's like mera khajana times. I think what I think as CI and Ayush, if we can bring it all together and then. Put it there in the market, right? Consumer should see. I think it has an implication. We at Dr. Vedya are conducting at least at this point of time ten clinical trials. At some point of time, it will because that's the only way I will be able to build trust, right, out there uh, at some point of time. So these are the implications in business. I, I can continue to talk <laughs> lots overall, but again, I am more of a consumer guy. I am not a uh, medic overall, so I can give you a lot of consumer insights and its implication on all of us how we market and think about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Uh, it's these are extremely positive signs, as you see, right? I mean, people are no more doing self medication, not looking for some products. They're actually looking for an advice from an experienced person. That shows why he's saying 16% of call ratio has gone up, right? And consequently, right? Vis-a-vis -vis people doing self-medication versus people who take this guided medication is also seeing more people coming back because that is far more efficient. And also the fact that, you know, the entrepreneurs over here, we are all talking of common languages about bringing that clinical validation base while they are, we are all operating in different silos or I mean, you have an opportunity to come together. These are all the real positive signs, I would say, from an entrepreneurship angle that I would like to take for. Thank you, Vivek. It's been very insightful. Now let me go to Mr. Dangesh, right? So, given that he's a patron patron of uh, Global Homeopathy Foundation, and he's also part of multiple incubators, and he works very closely with budding entrepreneurs in the homeopathy space, it would be very interesting to hear from him what are the kind of trends that he see amongst the budding entrepreneurs, and what are the kind of you know things that they are trying to solve. It would be a good insight that we will take from you, sir. Thank you very much, Srijita. Thank you, CAI, and uh, particularly you know, Mr. Vasudevan for giving me this opportunity. Uh, well, I have been engaged with homeopathy for a long time, and Ayush also for quite some time. And since I have come from a different background, uh, I have been engaging with IIMA 
alumni who are in the healthcare space. And there are around 250 members of IMA Healthcare, SIG as we call it, in which you know, so you've got MDs, managing directors, and the chief executives of the topmost you know, pharma concerns. And probably I was the first one you know, so who was advocating for Ayush. In last two or three years, there is such an interest now in Ayush within that group that I have been asked to hold something like this in I am Ahmedabad in the next two or three months. This is because of the fact that everybody is now looking at Ayush as the next generation business. And some time back I had done a webinar uh, on Ayush next generation business to just you know, to give a flavor and that has resulted into investors, uh, pharma makers and others to look at kind of complementing whatever they are doing so that they can give an overall uh, solution for healthcare to the respective you know, say groups and obviously make money on that. So that's the first indicator that investors, large investors uh, across, across the sectors, I mean it is not only the pharma sector, I have got requests you know, say, last one week from two people who are into the infra space and they are saying that we have got you know, say, surpluses you know, say, with, with us. What do we do with that? Why don't you know, say we look at some solutions for Ayush? I mean, their, 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 their vision may be to get into OTC, for example. Their, their vision may be to get into cosmetics and some other you know, lifestyle products. But the whole thing is that there is that growing interest amongst various target groups to look at Ayush. I'm very, very happy to see that Ayush business has grown to a level which you know, say was around seven times you know, say seven years back, around 2020. $2 billion in the products and $20, $25 billion in the services. Now, when we look at that, please appreciate that all this has happened with all kinds of challenges. I mean, when we start looking at the current, uh, you can say, uh, you know, difficulties, which obviously relate to solvable domains. We are talking about clinical trials. I'm glad to say that there are you know, now agencies which are doing on a small level clinical trials. We had, you know, say for homeopathy, people you know, say who talked about clinical trial modules that they are offering. And believe me or not, clinical trials of Ayush itself is a very, very big business opportunity. Like clinical trials for allopathic medicines so or biomedical medicines has become big business, you know, from India. I won't know the number, but it's a big business. Torrent is doing, and now I think Das, Pharmaceuticals, Zydas, all of them have got clinical trial companies earning, you know, say, obviously thousands of crores of, you know, semi revenue. So Ayush has got a huge opportunity for clinical trials. And this is essential from the fact that we need to convince the consumer. We need to, you know, say, build the trust. That trust will come when our present scientific bent of mind accepts that Ayush products or offering that is you know, being given to him is backed by needful research. Merely saying that you know, it was there in the text earlier and it was there in the documents and therefore it will work is not going to be as powerful and as potent as you are backing it with some data. Once that is done, I think you know, the very you know, the significant changes will take place in the field of therapeutics. Third thing, you know, that I would like to talk about are the incubators. I am attached with, you know, the half a dozen incubators and I'll talk about two of them because they are significant. One of them is LM College of Pharmacy. LM College of Pharmacy is the first pharmacy college of the country in Ahmedabad. LM College, Pharm college of Pharmacy has got the first adult incubation center in the field of uh, pharmaceuticals and related products. In last one year, we have been able to enroll around five incubators. A couple of them are very, very, you know, say renowned Ayurvedic doctors. Dr. Narendra Bhatt, for example, many of you may not be knowing, or if you know, you would understand how, you know, say maybe a knowledgeable a person like Dr. Narendra Bhatt is. He has been the president of an organization called IASTAM. Now, you may not, you may not have heard about it. It's called Indian Association for Study of Traditional Asian Medicine. IASTAM, started by Jandu and Dr. Bhatt. Now, Dr. Bhatt has become an incubator there in LMCP. And LMCP is very proudly telling everybody that we have got an Ayurveda Acharya who is, you know, say, who is exploring two product lines. One for cancer and secondly for fatty liver. 
and he is also going to demonstrate his own solutions and then build it up. So that's the second thing. In Ahmedabad, we have got a very powerful now uh, incubation center under the University of Gujarat, which is called IHUB. And IHUB, again, had engaged me as a mentor for Ayush, and they've got now 40 incubators for Ayush. So I personally think a whole lot of people are you know, say, thinking that Ayush and allopathy will have to go together. If you are looking at the modern medicine, it is going to be biomedical plus traditional medicine. That's what you know, Dr. Bhushan Patwardhan said in the inaugural at Gandhi Nagar. So we are having a very, very bright future. We need to cover the challenges up. There is a lot of interest amongst the investors. There is a lot of you know, say, interest amongst you know, say, the, the, the funds. I also know about you know, say, three funds who are you know, say, looking at Ayush as a separate vertical. Because until unless you get money, you can do you know, say, on a sm small scale some business and be happy with it for having created you know, the miraculous results. But when we want growth, when we want you know, the natural impact, then we require funds, we require technology, we require all the facets and we require naturally business models which are replicable or scalable. And that is what I think, you know, is bound to happen the moment, you know, say, uh, people like or pioneers like, you know, say, Rajiv Vasudevanji, who is, you know, who has demonstrated through Ayurveda, which has created so much of fervor and so much of interest for the simple reason that Tata's have tied up, you know, the Apollo Ayurveda. I happen to be on the board of governors or board of, you know, the advisors of Gujarat Cancer Society, where they have agreed that they would also like to look at Ayush, not as a mainstream, but as a palliative pain management and supportive you know, kind of system. To that, to that extent, they have come. Lastly, I would like to say, in allopathy, antibiotics has been the mainstay. Antibiotics are being used indiscriminately, profusely. 50% of, you know, say, uh, you can say antibiotics are going for animals and 50% are being used you know, by the human beings. But it has created a hell of a problem in form of AMR, antimicrobial resistance. I happen to be on the board of governors of AMR Declaration Chennai. Dr. Abdul Ghafoor runs that. And again, he is asking for solutions through Ayush to tackle AMR or to give alternatives for tackling, for you know, the managing the kind of microbial issues with the help of different things in Ayush, like UTI and things like that. They can be very well tackled by homeopathy. And one more point before that, I go on to something else, veterinary medicines. In the veterinary field, there is a huge interest now. Again, AMR, again, you know, there may be the contamination of the milk products. And you will all be delighted to know that Amul Dairy has started an homeopathic factory. And they've started making homeopathic medicines. And the first six months of their working, they have demonstrated a decline of 20% in antibiotics use. Nice. Maintaining, maintaining same level of health and improving the fat content and the quality of the milk. So these are the kinds of things. Amul Managing Director is a great, you know, they may be ambassador of homeopathy and he has told me that in five years, he will see to it that we, I mean, that is Amul starts giving this know-how of homeopathic medicine to the veterinary world outside of India, already signing, on the verge of signing with Denmark, already on sign of verge, sign, signing an agreement, you know, somebody in the US. So that's the kind of a thing that is happening. And uh, obviously I see a whole lot of traction, a whole lot of, you know, there may be positivity about Ayush. And I think we all can do it working together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It has been really an insightful set of points, right? And it's the, the, we can all say that the industry is looking yeah. very positive after hearing yeah. from that's, that's uh, sir, right? I mean, we are the right set of investors, entrepreneurs yeah. are solving the right yeah. kind of problems through the right ways, right? I mean, talked about clinical trials, about AMR as a problem. So, we are going in the right space and right pace, right? That's what uh, uh, we should say. In that note, about entrepreneurship as an opportunity, I would like to, I would like Sarika to point up, take her share her views about how her journey has been and especially building a company out of a city, a state in Uttarakhand, a state of Uttarakhand and how it has been for her for the last 10 years, 5, 8, eight years? 4 years. 4 years and yeah, <laughs> that's something. So I'll uh, almost feel I'm the new kid on the block, I've been listening to everybody sitting here uh, and I don't have the kind of experience that everyone else has. I'm going to stick to the business side of Ayurveda and not to the Ayurveda side of Ayurveda. 
Um, we started Jivisa four years back, uh, and we were very, very clear that Jivisa is a holistic wellness brand. Uh, and we started it knowing fully well that that's what we believe in. What you put inside your body, on your body, how you think, read, the conversations that you have, the people you meet finally leads to the well-being of you. Uh, was the philosophy with uh, which we started. Um, I had moved, I quit corporate after you know working for 20 years. I used to work with IBM in Mumbai. And I had quit and moved back to Dehradun eight years back, uh, when moving back to small towns was not as fashionable as it is uh, today after COVID. So when you go to a very small place, you change a lot of things in your mind. You start thinking differently, you start living differently. Uh, you slow down and you realize that there are way more important things in life than what you were chasing big cities. Uh, nothing against anybody here, it's just, you know, it was a more personal journey. Uh, so, uh, I think one thing that uh, changed drastically after the pandemic is how we started to think, behave and look after ourselves. So when I went, I was looking after uh, our creative agency and I realized that that's not what I wanted to do anymore. Uh, we needed to do something which was more, uh, which helped me look within uh, and helped me help people and that was the idea with which uh, Jivisa happened. Uh, date uh, You go back to the drawing board, it's completely clean slate and you're thinking, okay, am I doing the right thing, not doing the right thing. And then one thing led to another um, and four years later, I'm very, very happy that you know, the products we've curated over the last um, three years, uh, I always kind of dismiss. Uh, the services we are curating today, the, you know, uh, whatever we are adding to the bouquet uh, today is what is being accepted very well either, you know, whether it's, it is the direct consumer that I'm dealing with or our clients that we, almost 94% of our business is today B2B and, you know, very small part is B2C and B2C. Uh, so today, uh, I know that my Kada is being served in Vistara's business class and, you know, when we started taking, you know, one step after the other, we realized that oh, we must be doing something right. Uh, because the right people were coming on board and the right, you know, questions were being asked and we were giving a lot of uh, appreciation. So, uh, in Uttarakhand, I happen to be in Dehradun, uh, but I now realize that no space is small enough to restrict you if you have big dreams. Uh, mm -hmm. And if your story is authentic and right, people will come and, you know, partner with you. And, uh, so, that's how it started building. Uh, it is an all-women organization, like, uh, you know, and that also completely happened because I realized that when I started working, and because I'm a single mother, a lot of women would reach out to me um, naturally. And when that happened, uh, initially, we need to work with a certain strata, economic strata of uh, women. And then I realized that actually, irrespective of economic strata, a lot of women needed hand-holding. So my own ex-colleagues who had taken 10 years sabbatical, etc., started reaching out to say, do you think I can come on board? And I said, okay, come on board. Uh, and that's how we've been building uh, the organization. Uh, what I do like is, uh, that when you come to these forums, you realize that uh, there is just so much focus, whether it is from the government, the initiatives, the ministries, or you know people who are uh, kind of investing in clean, you know, right things, and that's the bedrock of what we are trying to do today. Uh, so we are trying to build a holistic wellness uh, organization. We are Ayurveda inspired, uh, but we do also believe in modern sciences. We do think that the two need to marry, uh, and there is enough and more opportunity to bring out. Uh, products that are natural, uh, products that are preventive, uh, products that can help you lead a good lifestyle. So you don't have to reach out to you. The 70% people that are dying for various lifestyle diseases, if we can arrest them, why not? And that's how we have ended up uh, building Jivisa today. It's an important point, right? I mean, uh, what Sarika was mentioning. Uh, like I was telling, if the industry has to grow threefold, four, threefold, fourfold, we have to get more, more, more and more entrepreneurs on the day, in the industry, right? And many of them come from bottom up from the industry and a lot of others come from a corporate background or some other industry, they come to Ayush as an opportunity. And Sadika is an example of coming from a corporate world and looking at Ayush as an opportunity. And we need more and more people to actually come to this industry. It's indeed heartening to see that, you know, this trend is also coming in the industry, seeing the attractiveness, because that's going to define the growth in the future, right? Now, let me quickly go to the next phase. I know we are running slightly short on time. I have one quick question to each of you. It's more about, if you were to think Ayush as an ecosystem for entrepreneurs, right? What are those two, three things coming on the top of your mind? 
what could be done better or what as CII we can take forward, mm -hmm. right? I want all of you to quickly do it in a couple of minutes, right? And then we need to ask, uh, get the audience questions also in that context. Ram, since you have raised also some funds in the past from uh, institutional investors, from that angle, what worked for you and what should our young entrepreneurs think about to proceed forward? Because funding is an essential part of, you know, entrepreneurs being growing. मैं ना एक कहानी सुनाता हूँ आई एम सॉरी फॉर पीपल वो डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी बॉलीवुड का एक लाइन है जब आप फंड रेज करने जाते हो तो कहते हो कि नया जोश है नई उमंगे और है नई जवानी बस आ जाओ आप <laughs> तो आप आप उम्मीद क्या कहते हो हमारे साथ ऐसा हुआ था एक के साथ तो बोलता है कि ना कजरे की धार ना मोतियों का हार ना कोई किया श्रृंगार फिर भी कितनी सुंदर हो <laughs> यही चाहते हो कि कहते कोई तारीफ करके और आ जाए The thing is, uh, it is basically uh, raising money uh, is is a task in itself, and there has to be certain opportunity that you have to be you know bringing in. Um, investment happens in an unorganized industry, so you have to find something which is which can actually get to a path of growth, can build value for the stakeholders. so most important thing is anything that you are doing is actually adding value to the customer so customer then your people and then everyone else including investors they actually come at the end so when you keep that in sequence things do happen other thing is that when you actually build a business just for the sake of investment it is a challenging but if you actually building something ki ye problem mai solve kar raha hu You, if you are solving a problem, then investment होगा नहीं होगा एक secondary चीज है आप एक problem solve कर रहे हो somebody कोई ना कोई तो आ जाएगा आपको there is someone in this universe for everyone that's how it happened resilience is the key um, I have another very interesting point about a very and how entrepreneurship is not just about new new people also about the old people generational changes that's happening and that is also fueling Indian uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem. For example, what an entrepreneur can do for a service industry or tech platform to run, you need manufacturers. So let me give you, for example, there is a company Vedratna, 200 year old history, new people coming in, adding new ingredients to it, bringing um, new thought, partnering with someone like us, and then getting to a scenario where hey, can we deliver the way the people want rather than what I have the way I have been delivering? Or my, I would go and say. Uh, investor hey i my father would have been happy this this way but i would be happy this way but my child would be happy other way so this is basically marrying all these things together is actually brings investor but most of for example i was recently very recently if anyone wants to take up i was part of a closed door uh, you know work with the geological survey of india they are actually building uh, a basically pro data uh, captivity uh, uh, where actually you can actually say where you can find something and where it is available and very interesting thing came around medicinal plant there are some areas which has got abundance of certain medicinal plants some areas is something else can we build something around that that will create this all this problem that you see around heavy metals xyz because certain areas are good for something certain areas are not the season centric and everything so you can actually build around that that is another uh, specific uh, speciality so not doing everything on earth is very important thing not everything you should do you should do one thing better than everyone investors would come to you thank you i think indeed insightful we very quickly any thoughts on one things that can I do better hope, but i will say again uh, two things a i think as this forum if we can bring all consumer research we all have right bring it under one umbrella and bring it in the world so it will create trust right consumers will start to believe right our products efficacious trust will increase number two i think lobby with the government Something similar for Make in India, which happened, there's an incentive so that we all do more clinical trials. It is costly. We know that, right? Uh, I have commissioned 
at least eight in last six months. So I know it's very costly. So if we do clinical trials, either a subsidy to that or through manufacturing, there are ways, right? How do we do that? So that hundreds of us, even if we do two per year, right? It's a huge clinical research and trust building over the next five, 10 years we'll be able to bring there. And I think the growth will happen. I would say that. Yeah. Thank you. And one more thing just I want to add, that's in investor specific. I just want to add because many people are actually looking for that category, that, that thing. Very important thing is one part. Uh, investors are very keen on this category. Uh, what you have to see is the traction and how problem solving is happening. No one has any question about market sizing. So market sizing problem has been solved by RIS, Ministry of Ayush and other parts. So you, nobody is going to ask that question. So that is taken care of. Thanks, Ram. That's a good point as well. The first point you know, that, that I would like to make is that under Ayushman Bharat, there are two components. The first is PMJAY. I was very happy to know and very much glad that uh, on, that, that Dr. Kotecha has confirmed that government is you know, going to consider inclusion of Ayush. But another important thing is the health and wellness centers. Health and wellness centers, uh, obviously to the tune of around lakh and fifty thousand, have been created, which are mostly mostly driven by allopathy. Government of India realized, Ayush Ministry realized, and therefore, 12,500 exclusive health and wellness centers based on Ayush were, were, uh, were sanctioned. Out of the 9,000 have already been created. But another interesting thing that I would like to tell you, and most of you may be probably aware, is that health and wellness centers are now called Ayushman Arogya Mandir. So, you have got Ayushman, Arogya Mandir, regular ones, which are not doing through allopathy and other things. But they have now, the government of India has now created a special category, Ayushman, Arogya Mandir, Ayush, in the bracket Ayush. And the proposal is to create AAM arm for every 10,000 persons. That means 140,000 Ayushman, Arogya Mandir, Ayush have to be created in the next 3 to 4 years. Since you know, say many of the Ayush you know, say treatments and therapies are going to be difficult to cover through insurance though Ayush ministry has declared and Bejonji is here that from 1st of April Ayush insurance products will be considered at par with others. Still I would say that whole lot of, you know, say, whole lot of you know, say treatments, whole lot of you know, prescriptions for Ayush will be difficult to cover under insurance. So a large amount of money has to be earmarked by the government to run these arm Ayush so that these you know, the benefits can reach the people. That's my first you know, the maybe point that would open up huge business opportunities, huge you know, the maybe kind of entrepreneurial opportunities which could be in social business or regular business. As a matter of fact, Ayush is ideal for social entrepreneurship. Last point that I would like to make is that in homeopathy, there is an alternative, not a perfect alternative, but I would say there is a semi-alternative in the form of no sorts. And I am I'm aware that no sorts have been tried out in Canada and many other countries, supported by a company called Boiron from France. Maybe it has not succeeded, but this is an alternative which is worth researching, developing and offering. And I would you know, say very strongly, you know, the, maybe you know, the feel that government of India should earmark suitable funds for researching and developing no sorts, which, which will become a kind of an alternative to vaccines in time to come. Because that is a very, very big area from the public health, from you know, the, the personal health point of view, under allopathy. Mm -hmm. In Ayush, we need to create an alternative to vaccines and that is possible through modified, improved, next generation no source. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, really insightful points. Thank you. Very yeah, I'll make it quick. Uh, one, of course, I completely agree with what Vivek is saying. I think there's so much happening and uh, especially uh, organizations like us which are not funded yet. Uh, the biggest challenge startup ka funding, I mean, you know, the cash flows and everything hota hai, and you do tend to not spend on things that are not immediate business. You, know, you tend to spend on products and operations and all of that, but there's a whole lot that needs to be done, but somehow gets put on the back burner. So if, you know, if we can start sharing that at an industry level, it also benefits small startups like ours. 
Uh, the other thing, and completely coming from a startup point of view, is that I know there's a lot happening. There are policies, there are regulations, uh, there's, there are funds sitting there, but people like us don't have the bandwidth or understanding of how to navigate that system yeah. and reach the right funds. So there can be some kind of a hand holding uh, from organizations, from the government to say that, look, we know you're in the space and you may not know that this is happening, but here is what you need to go through and you know, here is how you apply, etc. I think it will benefit a lot of people like us, uh, you know, within the space and around because um, uh, startups are only fighting fires. They are just too operational in nature. They are, they, they tend to get very, uh, I mean, strategic very rarely when they actually pull out and say, Arjun strategy we are doing. Otherwise, you don't have the bandwidth. Uh, and that, I think, would be a huge help for somebody like us. Definitely noted. Thank you. Any questions?